Iran right now. Hi, folks. I am coming to you from Flatwoods, Tennessee in Perry County. And this awesome Civil War relic in front of me is the Cedar Grove Ironworks. This was started in 1832, and one of the unique things about it is that double stack. In fact, it's the only one in the state to have two stacks. It was started by Wallace Dixon, who began it as a single stack furnace. He owned an interest as well in the Nashville Iron Works, and once he sold out there, started up Cedar Grove, he would make the move for it to be a double stack. And at its height, it was producing 1,800 tons of pig iron, an important part of the steelmaking process, per year. Wallace Dixon would go on to be Colonel Wallace Dixon in the Confederate Army, and he would sell out controlling interest to William Bradley and company. Now, even though it says no trespassing here, it's mainly just wanting us to stay out of the furnace. I have no interest in getting inside the furnace today, but we'll get pretty close. It's pretty amazing when you see this up close, and I'll talk in a minute about how long it's actually been sitting here without use. It's been a quite a long time. Mostly African Americans, of course, worked here. It was during a, a slaveholding period. They would make up the majority of the workforce. At one time, it had up to 120 people working here, offices for the managers. By 1862, the furnace had been going for nearly 30 years, and with the Civil War now underway, it was an important part of the Confederate infrastructure. Some other important things happened in 1862. In Nashville, for instance, we saw the fall of Fort Henry and Fort Donaldson. This was huge and essentially sealed the fate of Tennessee. Many cities like Memphis would later fall. This would also open up the Tennessee River to the Union gunboats, who were now free to harass targets up and down the river. The Cedar Grove Furnace was one such target. It would be shelled by three different Union gunboats, the USS Constatoga, the Tyler, and the Lexington. During the shelling that took place in February of 1862, virtually every building on the premises was hit. The smokehouses, the management offices, the workers' lodgings, all were hit by the Union flotilla. The mostly African-American workforce scattered and William Bradley, who was the last iron master here at the furnace, was later ambushed and killed. Now, Lieutenant Commander Seth Phelps of the Union Navy had a different take on the situation, not of chaos, but of people coming to the banks to raise the American flag to cheer on those Union gunboats. We have to wonder, is this the African-American workforce that they were talking about, which would, of course, make complete sense, or was has been thought by historians was more of Perry County actually pro-Union than it seemed. I highly encourage you to come out and see the Iron Furnace if you ever are in the area. It's, of course, free of charge. There are areas for you to have a picnic lunch, play some basketball, throw the football around. Parking can be a little hard at first when you come out here, but there's an empty lot across the road that's real easy to park in. But this was pretty cool. They ceased operations in 1862, and it's still here. Pretty awesome. Thanks for watching, everybody.